Hello everybody and welcome back for a beautiful Sunday here in the Yard and Gardens. Hopefully we'll be able to take a look at, uh, well, just about everything worth looking at. That's still potentially kind of a long-term proposition here though, so maybe we should just get started and let's get started with Trolls Garden. I am still absolutely in love with the overall concept here of the planters on the logs. I think it's kind of cute in a rustic sort of way. So I, I will definitely be doing that again. Um, probably going to be replanting mint in this thing again. It's been a couple of nice harvests out of that. Not sure if these coffee can style peppers will be uh, coming back outside next year, but it's been interesting this year. And here we have the ahi lemon drop. Look at that cute little guy. It's trying. It's trying in a couple of places. So massive props to you, buddy. But yeah, while they fit on the logs really well, not entirely sure that that is a plan. Tomatoes, at least large tomatoes, will not be going into those fabric planters. This did not work out. Maybe if I had drip irrigation, I don't. I don't even have an outdoor tap, so that's, that does, doesn't work. Got the sweet basil here. You cannot mess with basil's biological clock. It is absolutely unstoppable. So this needs to be harvested back. That'll probably be empty by uh, next Sunday. Nepalese bell, now here we have a pepper and this is one of the three gallon versions of the fabric planters and this seems to be a much happier plant than the tomatoes are, you know, by far. Um, and this particular pepper has been punished kind of beyond recognition come back to life in here and is now trying to produce so that's fabulous this is the Nepalese bell it's a very interesting well bell shaped kind of pepper and not like a standard sweet bell but almost like a, a classic church bell so very cool it's obviously going back inside so here's to hope <laughs> the rosemary this one's coming back inside too herbs seem to do pretty well this thing's been in here for quite some time. I don't think it went straight into the fabric. I think I got these like early this spring. So, eh, it's probably been six months or so in there though. Give or take, not doing too bad. Uh, not in one of the fabric planters, but you know what? I might give these a try in one of those five gallons next year. Mouse melons, these guys are rocking it out. These things are so cute. Got some of these seeds drying. I'm going to try sprouting a few of them. And if uh, those do work, I'm going to send out a few of those to previously, you know, mentioned individuals. We've chatted about it already. But here we have that sage. This is another one. I brought this in last year. Good woody stalks in the middle of all that. Like that is nice tree trunk looking gur and stuff. Good strong sage. Definitely going to bring that in. Looks like a few of those um, sage cuttings are doing all right, so the harvest wasn't for nothing. But I'm still going to get huh, a decent amount off this before actual fall. And then here we have the dark opal basil, which has definitely gone to seed. We can see a lot of spent flowers. I'm not sure if the covered in cobwebs is a good thing. But... Once those are all nice and dark and brown like these here, I'm going to start clipping them, putting them into a paper baggie, letting them dry off in the kitchen, hopefully shake out some good viable seeds. Would love to continue growing that. And that's about it for Trolls Garden so far. Next year's uh, no dig, no till, whatever you want to call it. Potato patch in a box garden is coming along nicely. Been some weird weather so I haven't really been doing a lot of mowing with the little mower. Haven't been piling this up as much as I might like to, but there's still quite a few cuts to go. So I'll pile this up and maybe get some actual compost for it before we put potatoes in next spring. But folks seem to do real well with potatoes around here, so that's, that's kind of exciting. The squash in a bag, all oh, the lessons we learn as we grow through life. Now this acorn squash here is not the one we saw last week, actually. That one died off, but... This one is growing in its place. I'm just gonna leave well enough alone. The spaghetti squash back here is starting to get kind of the yellow color. Tells me it's probably not gonna grow too much bigger than that, but it hasn't died off at the stem yet, so. 
it's going to be allowed to keep trying. Won't be saving seeds from either of these due to uh, cross-pollination issues. As much fun as it would be to find out what happened with the genetics there, I, I just don't have time for that right now. i got too many other things that I want to get actively working on. We've seen the tomato bunker quite recently. Oh, and it sure is looking nice with the red in there. So many tomatoes. Makes me wonder what would have happened if I had thrown a cherry variety in here. Celebrity hybrids are clearly quite productive. That's impressive. And these better boy hybrids are pretty nice as well. Producing all season long, good and strong. Nice size fruit. Just make sure you got your calcium in there. What do we got? Check this one. Hey, this one's still good. Couple of little insect spots, but I don't care about those. It's not like we're marketing this. Not quite ripe yet. That'll finish off in the house. But I grabbed it while it was still safe from the rot. That one too can ripen up inside. You know, I think that ketchup recipe I found called for 18 medium sized tomatoes. Would this be a medium or would this be a medium? Left or right? I guess that's today's question for the crowd. Beside and behind the bunker here, we have the corn patch this year. Pulled one of these off and um, even though the top, like to me, I thought this was ready to go. Uh, I don't think it actually was. And the kernel seemed very underdeveloped too. I'm thinking I really need to water my corn. Maybe this is one of those ones I can't, can't just trust nature to do her part. Because we do live in a strangely dry part of the prairies. It's an odd little bubble. We lived in a bubble back in the valley too. I don't know how we do it, but we just keep moving into these bubbles. So yeah, since I'm collecting the rainwater, thinking it's time to start pouring some of it out on the corn, I'm gonna have to dump them out before winter anyway because I don't wanna freeze and blow up my buckets. Carrots are coming along so nicely. Really, really excited to harvest these. So the few that I've pulled out have been some pretty decent sized carrots, right? So that's today's pick. I broke it. I broke my carrot. Oh well, that'll still be a nice nibble. Probably a decent chunk of carrot in there though. I should probably try and get the rest of that out. All right, so now we're pulling everything. Let's see what we got. A couple of stubbies. This one here. It's not too bad. Give me the rest of the carrot. Arr. So it wasn't a huge carrot, but it kind of looks like it had a slice in the middle. Still though, considering all of those grew in the planting you're supposed to give a single carrot, I'm totally okay with that. And I kind of like baby carrots anyway. This bit, well, that bit can go into the pit for you. Be going into the chicken hut eventually, I guess. Um, up in the radish and thistle garden. Really not much going on. Those pods are getting closer to a point where I think I might have some nice dry seeds in there. And uh, when I do crack on fine dry seeds, I will undoubtedly make a brief video on that. Still got some bees working hard on these thistles. Bees and wasps and wasps and bees. Wasps have a bad rap. I actually am quite pleased to see them in my garden. They serve a function just like everything else, whether we like it or not. My cucumber, got some kind of weird going on on the leaves here. I don't think I'm gonna get anything out of this. Kind of a waste of garden space this year. These shard plants are doing all right though. And I've generally been doing a good job about watering this fresh beet planting. I haven't gotten it yet today, but it's still actually kind of early, so I've got time before I consider myself to be delinquent on that. My little eggplant, way too late for you. We harvested these beans and they were fabulous. We also harvested the yellow beans that are growing back in here. And when I pulled them out, I discovered they were actually pretty sizable. So I don't know how that's all working out, but it seems to be working out. We've got all these random things here. Trollforge was saying looks like it could be amaranth. 
could very well be right. So um, I grabbed a top chunk of that, tossed it into the fish tank. They seem to be enjoying it. They've got quite the buffet going on in their tank right now though. So they're eating slowly from just about everything. But they're, they're eating slowly is the thing. And we kind of came cruising through the pepper patch here yesterday. And yet, I just saw, yeah, a little bit of color on the bottom of that garden salsa. It wasn't there yesterday. A little bit of color on the top of it. Over here on the Not a Red Demon. A little bit more color coming in on the bottom of that. Nothing necessarily pickable yet though. But it's all coming along. It's all coming along. These sand dollars might be a little bit bigger than they were yesterday. That's cool. And of course the tomato grove grooving right along. Oh, these sweet 100s. Gonna be lots of plants of those next year. Lots and lots of those. Probably not gonna use these flower pot planters for tomatoes next year. Um, they just, they need water more regularly than I remember to give them. However, something that doesn't mind a little bit of torture, say, a spicier chili pepper plant. Now that these all have holes in the bottom, I might very well just use them for peppers next year. See how that does. Because I'm not really thrilled with the whole post hole garden for the peppers. So I'm definitely going to have to figure something out because obviously, you know, peppers. I'm going to keep growing them. That's just, just what I do. Fantastic looking around here in these tomatoes though, I tell you what. Still very, very impressed by the coloring on this one here. Probably going to grow more of these. We'll see how developed those seeds are. I believe I still have some from what I was sent though. So if these don't develop, I can try again. But yeah, that is a very cool mater. The unpronounceables from Rob Bob seem to be growing up kind of nicely. They look like they really want to be some monster sized tomatoes. And I'm not feeling any signs of blossom end rot on there. So, all right, here's to hope. I guess it's just because the ones in the bunker are so crammed in there and that soil has been kind of heavily worked over the last few years. Oh, see, look at the color on these. Fantastic. That one tragically has exploded. All right. Nice pear shape on that one, though. I'll be munching that. Again, I guess that would be chicken fodder, right? And here's the John Deere Parts Crate Garden. We can see little Gus here. Got some green on him again, so we might actually have saved that asparagus plant after two years of living in a styrofoam party cup. The leeks, I uh, just watered these the other day. Looks like most of them are surviving their transplant. Not expecting much out of them. Again, spent too much time in a party cup. Little styrofoam cup, well over planted. It doesn't look like those dill are coming back either, but still an interesting garden idea. And the goal really is to fill this with asparagus so the dill and the, the leeks can ultimately take a hike anyway. This is the once known as unkillable mint from the basement. Clearly, it has suffered, but it's still here, so it might still qualify. Got uh, this coffee plant here. This is going to be going back in the house, so it's going to be yet another pest risk. But since a lot of these things like that one are going back in the house, it kind of makes it uh, irrelevant trying to avoid the pests by not bringing my peppers in. This bad idea zucchini is trying yet again. I'm not sure it's going to get very far with that, but uh, good on you, buddy. And we just looked at these chilies yesterday, so there's not a lot going on here you haven't seen already. Not one paper lantern though. Getting a little sexier. Scarier. And we've got the larger paper lantern. It's starting to take some color in the top there. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Then the matchbox. Just kicking it. Having a good time. Monster shard. Lace cabbages and kale. I really should uh, probably just pull those kale out of there. Call that one done. Should probably do the same with those cabbages too. Getting kind of tired of seeing these little white moths out my window. And the shard are 
you know, it's kind of interesting how they stagger their way up towards the warmer corner, but yeah, they cover up a lot of that space. It looks kind of like a decorative garden. Pink, red, pink, red, pink, red. So, yeah, cabbage and kale, I guess, can just plain go. 2016 sand dollar. Again, we just looked at these chilies the other day, but these peppers, little tiny baby peppers, getting a little bit bigger, doing the best they can with what's left of their season. Calabaza here. I am just going to snip this, I think, and call her done with the Ajio Huchapan. This thing has earned a place in my garden based on just the beautiful sort of waterfall of peppers that it seems to have formed only on one side of the plant. So, whatever. That's cool. Uh, at least I know which side I need to pick it from. So, it makes that a little bit easier. A few of these kind of drying off on the plant and the soil still got some moisture in it so I don't quite know what's going there. But, um, most of them I'm getting some nice ripe orange to them. Once that whole thing goes orange, well, take it in, pop in some more seeds. I gotta tell you, those two peppers that I put into the uh, Cheese Whiz bottle of mead, wow, I had a sip of that yesterday. Threw me for a loop, I tell you what. Starting to get more of these with some color. Got the dehydrator going right now. Just a couple of peppers in there. It almost feels like a bad joke, but gotta start somewhere. And I live in, uh, well, kind of a crappy colder climate so I don't get you know the world's largest harvests but it's not about the size of the harvest it's about how much you enjoy the process I guess the final thing we're going to take a look at today is this little raised bed garden that Shocks and I put together in June it is uh, the middle of August again we have um, well beans that were planted obviously after that point and tomatoes that spent way too much time trapped in styrofoam cups but we've got fruit coming out on these things adorable little tomatoes on adorable little tomato plants seems like there's more fruit on the side where I was testing that uh, biodigester tea seems like there's bigger stronger bean plants more flowers on those as well but what what really amazes me is not that the effluent is doing better on one side than the other side what amazes me is that this is growing anything at all in such a short amount of time if you go back you watch the video where we put this thing together <laughs> from everything i was raised to think about gardening this garden bed should be a joke and yet it's instantly functional already productive those beans, I'm just going to lay them down over the course of the winter. They're going to go right back into the soil. We're going to put some more soil on there, mulch it up a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to try planting our garlic in this over the winter because it's already productive. So <laughs> why not? Yeah, very exciting. That is also very exciting, but that is a whole different thing, isn't it? And that whole different thing belongs in whole different places. And if you're interested in that, you already probably know where to go. So that's all taken care of. If you're still with me at this point in the video, thank you so much for sticking around and, and kind of just being a part of my garden adventures. And, uh, well, odds are if you're still around at this point, you're probably one of the people that have given me one of those many, many helpful bits of feedback over the years. And I really, really appreciate that too. Uh, just kind of an interesting thing on the side. If you want to keep up to date on absolutely every video that I'm posting. Uh, the best way to do that is actually to follow the Twitter account because I have that thing set up like a robot. All of the channels, everything that gets pushed out there goes onto the Twitter thing. So that's the easiest way to see absolutely everything without um, necessarily subscribing to all the other channels. Although that does help with the YouTube analytics too, doesn't it? Gotta get to that thousand before I can remonetize. And yes, folks, this is my job. So I'm trying to remonetize those channels so that I can move forward in life, build the farm, get further ahead have more to show you <laughs> it's all this vicious circle that starts with getting that stuff going again so yes thank you very much for sticking around thank you very much for all your help over the years i look forward to continuing to share my gardening and farming with you as this all grows along take care everybody <laughs>